This is a GCSE physics video on advanced electronic components. The first component that we're going to talk about is a thermistor. We mentioned it briefly in our last video. And a thermistor is a resistor, but the special thing about the thermistor is that it changes its resistance depending on the temperature. So if the temperature goes up, if it is in a hotter room, then the resistance decreases. Higher temperature, lower resistance. And the same happens the other way around. A lower temperature means higher resistance. The other component that I'll talk about now is the LDR. Now, LDR stands for light dependent resistor. And the way that we draw that is like this. Two arrows usually represent light. So in this case, light is coming in. And the LDR it changes its resistance depending on how much light there is. So if the light intensity increases, then the resistance decreases. And if the light intensity decreases, then the resistance increases. Now, we'll see what these two components can do in a circuit. First of all, we need to build a circuit which has two resistors in series like this. Then, we take two contacts out here, and here we have what we can call the input voltage or V in and here we have an output voltage which we can call V out. Now in this circuit if we change this component to a thermistor then what's happening now is that as the resistance changes here because the temperature changes V out is also going to change. So with, the, with your thermistor, as temperature increases, resistance decreases. If resistance decreases here, we know, because we know we've got a constant current and V equals IR, if resistance decreases, then voltage decreases. So as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down and the voltage goes down. So V out gets smaller. This type of circuit is called a potential divider because it's dividing the potential difference across the two resistors. So as we've just said with this thermistor, as the temperature decreases, resistance increases. And when resistance increases, voltage increases. So as the temperature goes down in the room, this voltage gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what you could do with this circuit is you could attach some sort of heater and the heater would heat the room. The colder it got, the more power would go to the heater, so the hotter the heater would get. And so in that case, the colder the room, the more the heater was turned on. Now, Sometimes you don't want the heater to be on just a little bit and you don't want it to gradually increase. You just want the heater to switch on when the temperature gets below a certain point. And for that purpose, we can use something called a relay. Here I've drawn the same circuit, except you'll notice that this section is a little bit different. So we've still got the same things happening. As the temperature decreases, V out increases. And so as V out increases, the voltage going to this component down here increases as well. Now this component down here is an electromagnet. And that electromagnet is going to get, as you get more voltage going to the electromagnet, the field that it creates is gonna get stronger and stronger, the magnetic field, and eventually it will be able to close that switch. And when that switch closes, electricity flows through this separate circuit and goes to the heater. The heater switches on. 
when the room heats up again and the resistance of this thermistor goes down, V out goes down, the electromagnet then gets weaker and weaker and weaker again, the switch pops back open and the heater turns off. So in this kind of a circuit using a relay, we can actually switch a heater or an air conditioner or a street light on using different components, either thermistors here and here or LDRs here or here. And we can switch on and switch off secondary circuits instead of just having them gradually increasing or gradually decreasing like V out. So this section here is called the relay. Now the other big advantage of a relay is that a heater is going to use a lot more power than this small battery provides and it certainly needs a lot more power than a thermistor or an electromagnet. So what you can do instead of using a battery here you can connect this to a very big power source maybe the mains electricity at 240 volts and you can run your component on the 240 volts, but when that switch is open, you're not using a huge amount of electricity, you're only using the small amount of electricity over here. So you can power things and you can automatically switch things on with a relay, which need a lot higher voltage than you can supply to your relay. So you can split the power sources like that as well. Now there are two more components that I mentioned in the last video that we haven't talked about yet and those were diodes and LEDs. Now I briefly mentioned what each one of those does in the last video, but I'll cover it again now. So remember the two little arrows mean light, and in this case the light is coming out of the component, so you know that this component must be giving out light. So this one is an LED, and this one is a diode. Now LED stands for light emitting diode, so it's just one of these that gives out light as well. Now the special thing about diodes is they only let current flow in one direction. Current can't flow back again. So that is useful for making sure that current is flowing in the right direction in your circuit and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail now. Now you only need to know this use for diodes if you are studying triple IGCSE. Um, but if you have an AC current, an alternating current like this, remember alternating current is going from positive to negative. And in the mains electricity, it's, going, it's doing that about 50 times a second, 50 hertz. So if it's going from positive to negative, 50 times a second, but then you put in a diode, Diodes only let that current flow in one direction, so it can go this way, but it can't go this way. So you would end up with a current that looked like this. So what you can do then is you can stabilize your circuit, you can stabilize your current and what that does is if you added some more diodes, you could eventually get a current that looked like that. So diodes are used for converting alternating current into direct current from AC to DC. And that is called using a diode as a rectifier.